this is straight up basic chicken. And we're going to start with one of the really coolest tips I ever learned. Let's go to the fridge. I want to show you. Now, have you seen um, open chicken in the fridge before like this? I think you've mentioned that you got to, you want it really dry, and that's the key to a crispy skin. Is that what you say? You actually leave it here. You can take this one. Oh. We each have our own chicken. Oh, we do? Um, yeah. Wow. You put it in the fridge, uncovered, if you can overnight, and it dries it out. And that is step one for a crispy skin. And you always used to say, I want the one with the crispy skin, Mom. Dry it out, you're going to get crispy skin. You know how I often cook two chickens? Yeah, I mean, Just always, for my family always. of five, there's usually none left. But if you have two of you or four of you or whatever, still cook two chickens, because you can eat chicken tonight, you can make soup, you can make salad, you can make chicken salad. Anything. So, um, honey, put this right over there. The first thing we're going to do, and this was a clever idea I had one time, is we're going to make a rack. So picture if you had your chicken on a rack, it mm -hmm. would be like this, right? So we're going to cut our, t our onions in wedges to make a faux rack. Okay, so the onions are going to like lift the chicken off That's the right. bottom. That's so right. Lift the chicken up. It's going to flavor the chicken. And in the end, think of it, those onions oh, are going to be... Oh, great sauce and chicken juice. I know you love mm. chicken juice. So I basically, juice. I just cut it. I kind of cut it a wedge that is on the diagonal. And if you don't make it all the way the first time, you can always take a few pieces off because it's going to sit like that. And you just get the nice big red onions are a great way to go. But you could use white onions if you have white onions. This one, I'm just going to cut a little bit off this side and then hang it and just, I'm just going to, how, how's your rack? It's coming along. Okay, see, it's leaning like that a little bit. I'm going to, and then we can just put the extras on there. All right, so a, a leaning rack. That's fine. And then I'm just going to throw these out there, too. So we need two, two, four pieces, two onions, making a rack. You know what I also have done, which is insanely delicious, and you might remember this, too, Calder, is used old bread as a rack. Oh, yeah. No, Dad started that, didn't he? Oh, that did was he? Dad's original okay, maybe idea. maybe I stole it from Dad. Yeah, Sorry. maybe. I was, I'm not usually a stealer like that. No, I liked it. I wanted it no, to be No, that's good own. because then you get all this old bread that like is all awful and dry and yeah. then it cooks under a chicken and then at the end it's like better than the meat. Wait, you wanted me to do this? What, what's that for? Sorry, I just put it aside because I cut oh. mine. I, I had, I, I, I went kooky and You made a mistake? I made a mistake. I lost oh my head for a second. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it happens to the best of us. God forbid. We're going to flavor the inside of our bird. So how do I do that? A whole... Oh, I'm getting a little onion tear. Are you? Yeah, a little bit. Cut this in half, like this, and that is all I'm doing, and the reason why it's going in the cavity of the bird. Garlic, mixing with those chicken juices, doesn't that sound good? Oh, I cut it in half. Though. That's okay, no problems. <laughs> so, lemon, cut in half, just this way, okay? All right, and then last but not least, we are mincing a shallot. All right, so uh, we've had many a mincing lesson, and you know the first thing is to hopefully have a sharp knife. A sharp even, knife? This knife is very sharp. Even if you are living on your own, you're starting your own you know, household or whatever, or you're trying to set someone else up, just get a nice sharp knife for them. You know, you can't beat it. Well, although, I mean, I know one thing is, like, people expect you buy a sharp knife and it stays sharp. You've got to, like, give it some love. Yeah, you got you got it. You know, someday we're going to have an actual uh, total sharpening lesson where we take it from beginning to end. But it, it can be intimidating for people. And basically, you can take your knives down to the, um, a lot of houseware stores will sharpen your knives for you. So we're getting this minced pretty fine, keeping your fingers ticked. Oh, look at you. With this, what we're doing is we're making a butter. We're flavoring a oh, butter. Oh, we're making like a special butter? Yeah, that's like going to go. Like Miles always makes, what do you call them, compound butters? Oh, yeah. my God, I'm dying from the onions. Now. Are you? Okay, well, um, I don't, there's What's so the many. What's the trick? It's the, you, you light put, a match. You light a match. You put a spoon in your mouth. Wear onion goggles. Where's yeah. the onion goggles, You're making Mom? me cry just by looking at you. I'm so sad. Okay, so when, in the butter, I'm putting shallot and I'm putting an herb. I chose tarragon. Do you like tarragon? Do you even know what it tastes like? I have, pro I've never. Here, here's the taste. Just. And if you don't like it, we can go with another herb another time. I kind of love it. What does it so, remind you of? Anise. <laughs> licorice? <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, just, licorice. Okay, do you mm -hmm. want me to cut your stuff here while you recover? No, I'm cut. Oh, all I got to do is chop uh, Wow, you've did, you did incredibly good chopping on your shallots. Oh, well, I learned from the best. Okay, oh, thank you. So we have prepared seasoning to put on the inside of our bird. And one last thing, Calder, I'd like you to do is thinly slice this lemon. I'll explain to you later what that's going to do. This is just one more layer of flavor. Be very careful. Tuck your fingers under. You don't need too many. That's about it. Well, maybe one more, and we'll leave this for another time. 
All right, so into our bowl, we are putting three tablespoons of butter that is at room temp. That's important for what we're about to do here. So like half the stick or yeah. a little less a little than less half? little less than half. A stick is eight tablespoons okay. always. So you get your uh, minced shallots and your tarragon in here. And then we have a dedicated bowl for our chicken usage here for salt and pepper because I don't want to have any mixture up of um, chicken juice. So I have about a teaspoon of salt and you put a teaspoon in there too and a really good amount of black pepper, like, you know, almost a teaspoon. And then just mix that up and you have your herb butter and this butter is going to do something cool which is go in there between the skin and the flesh and really as the chicken roasts, it's just going to seep into the meat and give you extra crazy good flavor. All right, now we are going to stuff our bird. I have this bird which has been drying overnight in the fridge to make it super dry so it's going to be crispy. Now, the first thing I'm doing, Calder, is I'm taking the first lemon and sticking it into the cavity. Okay. Just put it in there. Actually, we're going to put both the garlic and the lemon. So I put one in and then the other and then another because what this little party of flavor in the, in the cavity is doing is it's going to just seep into the rest of the bird as it cooks. So just put it on in there. Yep. And a little bit of tarragon. A little bit more. I'm just trying to get the flavors into the center of the bird and then you're guaranteed big time flavor. Salt and pepper your whole bird on the outside. This and that's important. Know. This much I know. You, you know about seasoning. Well, you, yeah, that's like one of the things, one of the first big things that I realized with cooking is like if you put a lot of salt and pepper on something, it's usually going to taste good. Well, when it comes to meat, you kind of got to do that. Yeah, meat, if, I should say. And if you're eating in a restaurant, one of your favorite restaurants where you get your favorite steak or whatever, trust me, that's what's made it taste good is proper seasoning. So season all over, right? Mm -hmm. And then you get in with your butter. Now, this is kind of interesting because it's very easy to get in between the breast and the skin here. And that's what I'm going for. So I'm like digging my finger in right yeah, here. Yeah, get your two fingers in and separate it to get some space okay. in there first before you get started. And then go with your herb butter. We're already all chicken handy, so we're going to be careful that we just work with our chicken and then we wash up and just slide it on in there. And that's just a little flavor bundle just waiting to permeate your bird. And we used shallot here. It also goes a long way, Calder, towards, you know, if you're cooking this for the first time and you're not quite sure how, if your bird's done, and instead of just overcooking it, when you have this butter in there, it creates a little bit more juiciness. Okay, this can just go on our rack right now, our okay. onion rack. But instead, I'm going to show you, now, there's, there's fancy trussing techniques that you've seen when you have a Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah, you tie it up. I, I'm not doing anything fancy. All I'm going to do is just gather these legs up just a little bit so there's a tiny little bit of structure here. So you just put Wait, it. So what does it do to tie it together rather than just leave it loose? I have a friend, Sarah, who you know is a very good cook, and mm -hmm. she never likes to tie her chicken because she wants it all cooked. So I'm going halfway between trussing, which gives it a nice compact size and makes it, you know, cook evenly and just, so I, I like what Sarah said, that you want, I want all this stuff brown and yummy, right? Mm -hmm. Not so just not the too, outside of the thigh. Yeah, yeah, exactly, no, of the, of the leg. Not too, Here, I can do good? this. No, okay. I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay, you're going to do it. So I'm going to lift this onto the rack of onions I have, right like this, which is, gives a little elevation. And then Calder, when you put yours on, I like to put the legs, you know, when I'm doing two birds on a pan, I like to do them in opposite directions. I always feel like it's a little beefier here around the legs, so that if they're all going across, it's maybe a little crowded. So just lift that up and turn it. Turn it the other way. Yeah, here, you know what? Let me lean, bring this forward for you. It's like, like this. Exactly. Just put it onto your rack. rack. Beautiful. That's great. Now what we did, with, the reason I did these lemons is because I thought, okay, a little bit more lemon flavors. So tuck one under each wing. So the, you put the lemons on because what, it like permeates the flesh? It's just, like... it's just a little bit more flavor. I think it smells great. And you know me, I absolutely love lemons. Sometimes mm -hmm. your father says that I have a lemon problem. <laughs> but um, I It's better than some problems. <laughs> that's true. And I got it from my mother, so I came by it honestly. All right, these are nicely snuggled onto their red onion rack. The oven has preheated to 400 degrees. Okay. Really important to get a hot oven. And it's going to cook for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, but I'm going to show you a trick when it's done. An instant read thermometer helps you get it to where it needs to be, 165 degrees. Got it. The lemon tarragon roast chicken is, oh, that wow. is ready. And those are beauties. Teaching Calder how to make roast chicken. And we make two for the price of one because we have leftovers if we're lucky. Here, let me get the oven door for oh, it you. It smells really, really good. Okay. 
Now, very, very important is to know when they're done. I mean, these look done, right? If you just jiggle it a little, you can tell that it's cooked, but not overcooked. But an instant read thermometer is important. You bring this to 165 degrees, and you want to get this right in the joint, right so there. In the, so like what the idea is to get it the deepest, most middle part of the meat. That's right. So then you get it to 165, and you pull it out, and you can get these thermometers at the grocery store. They're digital ones. You can get them for like 10 bucks, and then you learn how to cook meat properly. Lesson number, I don't know, was it four in this whole training session? You need to let these rest. Here we go. Take this off our shelf. And look at all the beautiful juices in there. So we trust it just ever so slightly, and we can just slip this off and start carving it up. Now, these lemons are really just beautiful for the plate. I don't have a special way to cut this in the sense that I learned it in cooking school or anything. It's just the way I always go after a chicken. So I go right into the joint like this of the leg and get it right off. Same thing with the other leg. Now, we get to a territory on this bird which has become a little controversial in my house, <laughs> and that is the wings. I, when the kids were young and they didn't really know much about what was going on, and I cut it quite close down into the breast, I love the wings, so I would just always eat the wings. My husband, sweetheart that he is, would always give me the wings. And then, I guess my kids... Mom, the fight would not be worth it, please. <laughs> and the kids started copying me. And they all wanted wings. And next thing you know, there's just not enough wings. Now, don't you want to see what happened with, with our... The, with the butter? Yeah. Yeah, of course. And you can see how beautifully moist mm. that breast is. Mm. 